What's up guys? I hope you're having a good night, day, morning, evening, whatever you're doing. I hope you're doing it good. So we're going to be looking at the Nikon, Nikon Coolpix P1000. I'm going to show you around. I'm going to show you the buttons, show you the menu, show you what stuff does. And I'm going to show you how I like to have it set up and also show you some tips and tricks. It's not going to be too, too, too technical. But when you get done watching this video, you're definitely going to know how to utilize this camera, the features and the functions. And just for the sake of this video, I am going to reset every single setting. So that way we can just start from scratch like you're pulling it out of the box. Um, you can do this too if uh, you'd like. But I'm just going to go ahead and reset all. And we'll just jump right in. So the first thing we're going to start off with is kind of like this mode dial here. So this is going to be all your different modes. And think of the green. Green means go. This is your auto mode. This is where the camera is going to do all the work for you. You don't have to worry about how bright stuff is or how dark stuff is. It will do all the, uh, all the work for you. So if you're just getting it and you just want to go out and shoot and start capturing awesome stuff, switch it to this mode and you'll be good to go. So taking a picture, you just push this button right here. It'll take a picture. If you pr press down halfway, it will focus. So you can also take videos in this mode by hitting this red button right there. Okay. And then it'll stop the video. And I'll talk about the zooms real quick. You got a zoom lever here. You can zoom in and zoom out. And then you also got a zoom lever over on this side, which is a little bit slower. And what's neat about this zoom one over here is that there's a button right here that allows you to snap back and snap back it just zooms all the way in while you're holding it down so you could reposition this say if it was on a tripod or something and then let go and it will zoom back in so you got two different options there for zooming now if we look here we also have m a s p these are like your different photo type style so m stands for full manual and what full manual it allows you to control the camera everything from the shutter speed which you see right here to the aperture which you see right here and it also allows you to control the iso and since i reset it i believe the iso is going to be adjusted automatically but i will show you here to adjust your shutter speed use this little dial that's how you would control your shutter speed and for this dial is how you would control your aperture. Now there's no shortcut way to adjust the ISO. You can make a shortcut where you use this focus ring to adjust the ISO, or you can set the F, FN button, which is a shortcut button. Um, you can set this to where you can go in and adjust the ISO. Otherwise, you'll have to go into menu and you wanna go down to the ISO sensitivity and as I said, it's set to auto, but you could set that to, you know, usually start off at 100, start working your way up. They also do have the fixed range auto, and this just means, hey, it will go anywhere between 1 and uh, 400, or you can do 100 and 800. It won't go above that 800 ISO. So I usually, you know, outdoors, at least I'll start at 100. So <clears throat> we'll move on. You got the A. A is aperture priority. Um, that's where you can set the aperture and then the camera will basically compensate for the rest. Shutter priority, just like aperture priority, but it's the shutter you control. So I'll adjust the shutter. Okay. And the camera will control everything else. So and you'll see when I zoom in there, it's, it's adjusting automatically. It's not a fixed 2.8 throughout the whole 3000 millimeter. So if you're wondering like, oh, why can't I get it back down to uh, F2.8? Because when you zoom in so much, that's just the way it goes. So eventually it will actually go all the way up to F8 when you're zoomed in all the way. So just like that. And then P or program mode, switch it there. It's kind of like a hybrid uh, auto, but it allows you some control um, where you'll adjust both the aperture and the shutter speed. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, I call it like a hybrid uh, auto. Um, so then you have scene. 
One thing I want to point out too is that when you look at your menus, like let's say we'll go into auto and we look at the menu, you'll see the menu is just like, oh, it's just these two. But then we switch and go into video and you'll see that we have more options. Now watch, we'll go ahead and we'll change it to scene. And then all of a sudden we're gonna get a ton of different options. And this is where like your special effects is gonna be, um, your panoramics, like your sports. So basically it's telling, hey, this is what I'm gonna be shooting. And the camera will kind of make the adjustments for you. But if you're looking to do time lapses, a lot of people like to do time lapses, especially of the stars and things like that, that's where you're gonna find it. You're gonna find it in here. So we'll go down to, uh, there, there you got time-lapse movie, super-lapse, but in time-lapse movie. Now these are preset times again. I'm not, I, I don't think you can adjust these times, but let's say you wanna do the landscape time-lapse. It says 25 minutes. You don't have to wait the whole 25 minutes. You can cancel it after 10 minutes. So. Uh, you just hit OK to cancel it, and it will cancel it. So this is where all of your different, you know, come on, pet portrait, easy panorama, if you want to take long panoramic pictures. So your menus may be different. So if you're, you know, looking for something, you're like, oh, I remember seeing it in the menu. Well, it's probably because you're in a different mode, and that's why you're not seeing it any, any, anymore. Uh, we'll go on here. We got moon. Again, this is... This could easily have been put under scene, but they actually have a set mode for it. And what it does, mood, moon mode, is when you take a picture, it automatically puts a three second timer on it. And you're gonna usually wanna use a tripod when you're taking pictures of the moon. And when you take a picture, it will count down from three so you can take your hands off the camera and that way you won't get that shake. Um, and then they also, you know, you see how it says, okay. Uh, down there and it says a thousand millimeters you can go in and change this thousand millimeters to um, the focal length you can have it just jump to three thousand millimeters so the camera will remember when you put it in moon mode and you hit okay watch it's gonna jump out to three thousand millimeters so it's just little shortcuts like that but the most modes that I use that I use the most is auto that's for when I just want to run and gun. Um, and then I use M for a lot of photos. And then there's also movie manual. And movie manual is nice because again, you can adjust the shutter speed, you can adjust the aperture, and you can also adjust the ISO. Now, don't forget, you'll have to go in and make sure that you set that ISO to whatever you want it to be. And you'll see ISO begins at 125 on video, but on photos, it begins at 100. Um, and here too is where you can set your white balance. If you're gonna be going indoors and then outdoors, you know, you can leave it set to auto, but you might get some weird colors sometimes, but you'd wanna go in here and set your white balance. It's pretty self-explanatory to where if it's daylight, you wanna set it to daylight. If you have incandescent lights, you'd set it to that. Fluorescent, you set it to that. Cloudy. Um, a lot of times I'll set it to cloudy just because it makes it a little bit more golden looking, a little bit more yellow looking. Um, otherwise, you can choose the color temp yourself. So majority of the time I have it set to daylight, but, um, you know, if it is cloudy, you know, set it to cloudy and that way it won't just look so blue. It'll give it a little bit, you know, better yellow tint. So also with video, we do have different options. This camera does shoot 1080, uh, 30 frames per second, but it also shoots 60 frames per second. And if we go here into, um, it's gonna be in the menu. So you click on menu, and then you'll have these different options over here. I'll go down to the second one, and then I'll go down to movie options. And that's where we can set it to, I mean, you could do 1080, 30p, but I would recommend 1080 60p, you'll get smoother video, or go up to the uh, 2160 by 30p, which is 4K. So that's gonna give you just a bigger, clearer picture. And as long as you don't you know, wanna slow anything down, if you do wanna slow anything down and use slow motion, I would go 1080 60p. Um, I mean, you can, let's see, if, 
yeah, or you can mess with those. But majority of the time, I'd go 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second, or this first one, which is basically like 4K. So also we can talk about, I wanna talk about focus. This little dial right here will set your focus between autofocus and it will set it to manual focus. Manual focus is good because it allows you to dial in your focus very well. And let me zoom in here a little bit more. And I'm just gonna go in and adjust my ISO. That's the only problem with this is that you have to go in here to adjust your ISO. There's no real shortcut. I'm gonna bump it up to 1600. And it looks close to right. But when I have it in manual focus, you can use this big focus ring and you'll see it just kind of zoomed in there and that's just allowing you to dial in to what is in focus. And now you'll see kind of like, I call it sand, um, but it allows you to see what is in focus. So whatever the sand is on is what's gonna be in focus. And you can go in more. These are all the things where you can go in, oh, let's see here like this. So if I adjust this, it's gonna zoom me in. But if you look, it says times four, I can back out or go in even closer, or I can push back and then it will get me back out. So as I'm adjusting the focus ring, it's gonna zoom me in and say, oh no, that's too close. You can always back out with that button right there. And there will be an issue. You cannot switch when you're recording. So say I'm recording right now, I can adjust my focus with my focus ring. But let's say I want to switch to autofocus. I can't do that. I have to stop recording. Let me give it a second, stop recording. And then I have, and then I record again, and now it will autofocus. But with autofocus, with video, you actually push this button right here on the left to focus. Where when you're in the photography mode, you push this button halfway down to focus. So that is basically the difference there. So let me go ahead, I will stop recording. And it's just taking a second for the camera to write. And I'll back out here. And then now I wanna talk about like this eye sensor thing. So a lot of you might say, you know, that's cool that it switches by itself. It switches between this little view guy and this guy. But <clears throat> a lot of times it gets in my way. So what I do is I'll go here into menu and I'll go down to this toolbox right here and it says EVF auto toggle. Turn that thing off like that. And then now, oh, it won't switch back and forth because that switching back and forth can just get real annoying. So how do you switch it back and forth now? You just push this button, boom. And you can switch back and forth. But again, if you're recording, same recording now, and I wanna switch and start using the eyepiece, I can't. So you have to stop recording, and then I can go ahead and switch back and forth. Now you got a display going on here which shows you everything that's going on. You got your battery, your time recording left, uh, you know, the quality of your footage. You can hit display, and it will take that stuff away. So. If you ever wonder where your stuff went, you're like, oh no, where did it all go? You just hit that display, that's where it went. Um, your play button, that's pretty self-explanatory, will allow you to look at the stuff, uh, the photos that you've taken on here. And anytime you wanna exit out of the menu or anything, you just push this little button right here, just half press it on the, on the shutter button. Uh, now let's talk about this AEL and AFL, this is auto exposure lock and auto focus lock. So say you have something locked into focus and here I'll just kind of show you here with my hand. So if I have it, let's go ahead, put this thing in auto and watch these numbers down here at the bottom that will best. So as my hand's getting closer, it's having to slow down the shutter speed, right? So let's say I wanted to lock it in to that 1 13th of a second you hold this down and it will stay locked. See? Now, as soon as I let it go, it's going to adjust for what I'm pointing it at. So say you were indoors and it was dark and then you walk outside and it's light, you hold this button down and your camera won't change. 
But see, as I took it off, it changed. Now, you can program this button to... <clears throat> Let's go down here to the wrench and... Uh, so here we have it down under the wrench, AEAF lock button. So let's say you didn't want to have to hold down that button. You can go down here to AE lock, or you could just say auto exposure only, where it won't affect your focus. Or you can go down here to AF, where it will hold your focus. So if I'm focused on my hand right here, I don't even know if I can focus this close, but let's see. Okay. So now I push this down and now it's not going to automatically focus back to the lenses, but I have it set to, uh, let's talk about the focus for a second. So if we go back up here, this will make more sense. If I go down to autofocus mode, you have AFS, which means autofocus single. Okay. That means when you hit this button, it will focus one time whatever it lands on, it will hold that focus. Okay. And then if we go to AFF, that's auto focus full time. So that means you're not holding down this thing. It's going to consistently be hunting for focus. It might not be hunting, but it's going to continuously see if stuff's moving and try to focus on that object. Now let's say you have an object that isn't going to move like that lens. Your best bet would be to only have autofocus auto single. And that way, if something were to come along, it wouldn't grab the focus. And that's sometimes when you can get like a pulsing type look. And if you want to eliminate it completely and be deadlocked in, I switch it to manual focus. I dial it in and I just hit record there. And then you don't have to worry about, you know, tracking or anything like that. Um, the beeps on the camera, you can turn that off. That is sometimes pretty distracting. It can be some people do like it, but you can turn the button sound off or on, and that's going to be found underneath your wrench, underneath sound settings. Um, let's just go look through here a little bit more. Uh, the peaking, what the peaking is, is what I talked about before is it it's, puts that sand over whatever is in focus, uh, but you can turn that off. So if that's going to be distracting for you, you just go ahead and hit off. And then you can see when I zoom in here, and let's get something in focus, and you see that sand won't be there. But I like the sand, especially if the sand works. Okay, I'm going to jump back into movie mode. So that's going to be the M with a little video camera. Now, one thing you might notice is if you're out doing video and it's a sunny day, but there's some clouds and the clouds keep coming in and making the exposure a little bit darker, this will be set out of the box to exposure mode of uh, aperture priority. If you don't want it to get dark on its own and lighten back up on its own and you just want it to be consistent, so when it does get dark, and I'll do this sometimes when I go out and do a time lapse of the sun, I'll make sure it's very dark. So that way when the sun rises and it starts, you know, that way the camera doesn't, the lighting of it, the exposure doesn't rise with that. So I'll set that to manual. And then now down here, you'll be able to see that you'll do your own ISO adjustments. All right, so let's jump in and look at this little FN programmable button. Now, one thing you'll notice is that depending on what mode you're in, you see that it, it doesn't really do anything, but if we switch over here to the PSAM mode, put it in aperture priority mode here, and we push the FN button, you'll get a couple different, well, actually a lot of different options here. And I'll just kind of start up here. You have single, so this is just gonna take a single shot. Now watch, I'm gonna hold it down, and it takes a picture, okay? And I kept holding it down, it still just took one picture. So go here to continuous and click on that. Now I'll get like four or five pictures out of it. So if you're doing like a bird or something like that, you'll hit that and just get a couple pictures right in a row. So this is what it sounds like. Okay. And then it just stops automatically because it's just, that's how long it takes to write it. Uh, and then we'll go down here to low. I don't really know. I guess if you just need a lower speed, that's what you'd use. 
I don't ever really use something like that. And then we got some other options here, which I don't use at all, but you have like pre shooting catch and then 120. We're supposed to take 120, uh, but it, they just don't, oops, they just don't look the best. Same thing with uh, 60. It's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe you'll find them useful. I don't really find them useful. Uh, we have time interval. Uh, this is where if you want to do a time lapse on your own, when you're not in the scene mode. Uh, the thing is though, is that it doesn't, you can only do it like 30 seconds. That's the lowest you can go. So if you want to take one every five seconds, it can't do it. It can't process it that fast. So if I had it set here to 30 seconds, uh, most likely though, you know, if you're doing like a sky or something like that, you could set it to, you know, five minutes or something like that. So it'd be five minutes. And then every five minutes and 30 seconds, it'll take a picture or you could just set it to 30 seconds. And every 30 seconds, it will take a picture. And when it's actually starting and working, your screen's gonna go black. I think it's just to conserve battery. So don't be really alarmed, but you'll see it take the picture. The screen will go black. It will count another 30 seconds. Then we'll take a picture again. And then to cancel it, you just push again, the shutter button. Uh, we'll click on the FN button again. We'll go down here and that's all of them for there, but that's not all. If you click down on FN, it's gonna bring up a whole more, uh, bunch more options. If we start up here on top, you can see the image quality. Uh, you can do normal, fine, raw, or you can do raw plus F, which is raw pr plus fine, or raw plus N, which is raw plus normal. So um, the raw files, I haven't really been able to play with them. I don't know if an update has came out yet, but this camera can shoot raw, but like Lightroom, um, I don't know if it's recognizing them uh, at this time, but you do have those options. So let's go here, push F1 or FN again and go down. And then we have some other uh, different options. I can go to white balance. Uh, your metering mode, you can go and set your ISO, uh, auto focus area mode might be of some interest to you. And from here, oh, watch, I might have to clear out, I'll have to switch it to auto focus because you can see none of those were available. And now that's an auto focus mode, I'll be able to access them. So you can do like manual spot. So what this does is it puts the focus point and lets you move it around which you might find helpful so if I zoom in here and it's like that and we'll go and look at the other go here for a second or you have the manual normal uh, manual wide and it's gonna be subject tracking which I don't know what you'd really want to use subject tracking for, maybe like some sports or something like that. Uh, then you have target finding autofocus. I think that's what it comes with standard. So it's basically going to put these boxes uh, over your over your screen. Face priority. It's going to look for a face. And you can see right now it's got that little focus assist, how it turns red. You can turn that off if you find it to be uh, somewhat of a, like a nuisance or something. It's called the AF assist and it's going to be under this wrench and it's set to auto. You can turn that off and then you can see you get rid of the red. So as for other FN, I think that might basically cover all the FN options. Oops, I'm not doing something right here. Okay, vibration reduction. One thing I will recommend is that if you get this camera and you're going to do a lot of zoomed in shots, you will want to get a tripod. I'll put a link to the tripod I use in the description, but there are options and you can get to this vibration reduction from any menu by going down into, well, it might be different for 
depending on what menu you're in. I think, okay, it's underneath the wrench at the very bottom and it's going to be called vibration reduction. And out of the box, it's going to come into just like this normal mode to where you'd want to use it if you're not on a tripod. But if you put it on a tripod, you'd want to go ahead and turn that off. Otherwise, you'll get some weird jittery stuff going on um, when it's on the tripod. Uh, they have a couple different ones you can try out like active say maybe you're moving a little bit faster than normal um, and then they talk about like frame it first or active framing first so experimenting between these with different scenarios is just what you, much you have to do but if you do put it on a tripod uh, make sure to turn that off I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the microphone for a second because this does have something called a zoom microphone and what the zoom microphone does is as you zoom in the microphone will try to zoom in with it and this is something you may not want because as the microphone starts to zoom in then the sound can get a little bit weird so it might be a good idea just to turn that zoom microphone off all right let's jump back over to the uh, movie this is movie manual now once you get into taking your uh, movies manually you'll want to pay attention to your frame rate and your frame rate is going to be found here underneath this little camera here and it's going to say movie options and you can see I have it set to 21630 30p now you want to have your shutter speed which is right here always set to double your frame rate so if it's set here to 30p I would want my shutter speed to be 60 and the reason why you want to keep it double whatever your shutter or your frame rate is is otherwise you'll start to get some stuttering and you'll see like the stuttering and stuff just doesn't look natural it doesn't look normal especially if you're gonna be out on a really bright day and you want to get your shutter speed to be double whatever your frame rate is so 30 60 now let's say I went down here and I switched it to uh, 1080 60p then I would want my shutter speed to be 120 or well 125 if that makes sense so it's double and that will just allow your footage to just look more natural and if you're out on a really sunny bright day you may find yourself that you need to get a filter, especially for video. Uh, for photo, it doesn't matter. You can have your shutter speed at whatever, but that's just a quick tip on shutter speed. Now, real quickly, I just wanted to bring this up because this can be of some help, uh, especially if you want to go out and you're trying to find stars in the sky. Say maybe you want to go out and find stars in the sky. You'll notice, and you want to take video of the stars, right? So you'll notice you'll put it into movie manual and you'll go and try to look for the stars and it's going to be like super hard to find just for the way the screen reads. It's really weird. So this is what I do. I'll go out there and I'll put it in auto mode. Okay. And then I will search for whatever star I want to find. Right. And I'll zoom in on it and it's clear as day. I'll get the camera lined up perfectly and then I'll switch it. To movie manual and then the star will be right there in frame and i'll just be able to hit record and record the star which is just a lot easier to do so if you're having trouble finding stuff uh in the sky or whatnot switch it here to auto don't record anything just find it in auto without recording and then once you find it switch back to movie manual and hit record Okay, I think I'm wrapping things up here. I don't think I covered quite uh, about picture quality when you're in the picture modes or even in the auto mode, whatever picture mode you're in. And you want to take, obviously, the most best picture you can possible. Uh, you'll just go down here into the menu and you will go up to the image quality and you'll want to change that to fine. That's going to be... The best, if your computer is reading these raw files, then I would suggest doing fine and raw. And then your image size, you always wanna make sure that it's at the very top, and that way you're gonna be taking the best 
pictures. Now I know I already covered the moon mode where it puts a three second timer every time you go to take a picture. So you take a picture, it will count down from three, but you don't necessarily have to be in the moon mode for that. You can be in any of the picture modes and you would just go and push this little timer clock right here on the left and that will bring up a menu where you can do a smile timer where it waits for someone to smile. I tried it out a couple times, it works here or there. Uh, but you can also do the three second timer or 10 second timer right there. So if you want to set, select three second timer, then again, it will count down from three to one and take the picture. So that's a majority of the things that I use with this camera and I hope it helped you out. Uh, put a link in the description if you want to check out some of the footage that I've shot with this camera. Um, but that's that, and thanks for watching.